I have been waiting months to get these new flywheels on this engine. And look at how nice it came out. Oh man, gorgeous. So before I get the engine any further along, I do have to get the transmission bolted to it. And what I need to do is one of these was leaking. It was either that one or that one. I think it was this side was leaking, but let me get that seal in there first. We're at a stage where I can no longer do anything with this on the bench. This is good, this is a good thing. We're making progress, we might make Durham town. I've never been a big fan of these engine mounts, especially this one. This one keeps shearing my bolts off. Um, the transmission mount's great. The one mount on the other side of the engine seems to be holding up pretty good. I only sheared one out of three of the bolts on that side of the engine. This other mount drops on there. My thought was come in here, flip it upside down, because you can see it's almost the perfect height. And so I could weld these brackets, I can weld onto that frame rail. My concern with doing that is just the, the back and forth movement this way that would um, fatigue that metal. But I was just talking to master frame builder, rather be welding, and he suggested um, I do the weld thing and then, you know, gusset the crap out of it. So let me get this thing chopped up and we'll keep rocking out here. So I've got it in a position, the fit is nearly perfect. And then I would just weld that whole one and that whole side. So we're breaking out the big clamps. Nice and flush on that side. It's all welded up, boys. And I actually ran out of my wire, just that flux core weld, I ran out of it. So I switched over to the TIG welder, and I bet you can't guess which one got the flux core. Is it that one? Is it that one? Is it that one? Eee! Definitely that one. But that sucker's not going anywhere. Because of the time constraints for getting to Durham Town, I'm just going to have to use the old turbo, the old KO3 turbo. Using the old turbo is the only way I can get to Durham Town. No, I'm just kidding. It's either 400 horsepower or bust. Our new massive GTX turbo here. Oh, this is so bad. There's no way. That's it. Okay, so the intake of this turbo is right in line with this guy. So this is what I have been concerned the most about. It would look really cool right up on the top of the engine. This is gonna be a problem. Okay, so this is with the fuel tank now moved back about an inch. So I can extend these arms underneath here a little bit to have the fuel tank this far back. That is doable. Um, I would have to cut this bar out and move this bar back. The clearance here is the problem and the clearance up there is the problem. The internal wastegate actuator, this becomes a really difficult problem to solve as long as I'm using that internal wastegate. I think I can build the, the header that short, but then we run into this issue where what doesn't work is that. I can cut this bar out. This is a major supporting bar right here and I am actually going to move it. Chopping and moving this bar, and chopping and moving this bar, and then extending these, is gonna be about the only way that this turbo is going to fit in here. This is insanity. It's 
the next day, you can see last night I got our frame rail moved over. I think what I'll do here is I'll fabricate the manifold first in the slight possibility that this may still fit without having to move this back any further. probably didn't show you but these gaps on the sides here I just didn't have time to make this thing look good this is the fastest fabrication piece I've ever created but these gaps were well they were as wide as the well that you see on either side don't look too closely at my welds and we can still be friends finished up here again don't look at it too closely now I did come in here and just like I do with all of my other stuff I hogged out nice, smooth openings. I even hit a little bit of a taper on this corner, a little bit of a taper on that corner, and you can see that airflow has a nice direct shot. And so on this design, the exhaust gases are coming out. That gas is gonna continue on straight until this one fires and then it comes back this way, and then this one fires and it pushes it all down. If I were to take this design and put it on the previous setup with the other turbo, I could possibly see a 20 or a 30 horsepower gain. That's gonna make all the difference in terms of performance, especially with this big turbo, we gotta get the gases out of this engine as quickly as possible. It's a good fit. Just got back home, lost two days, which I can't help. I gotta go to work once in a while. So I lost a couple of days for work, uh, but I'm back here in the garage. We are now T minus less than a week before Durham town. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna work out or not. I'm trying my best here, guys. All right, so I'm continuing to work here. I got the, uh, the new fuel injectors. These are the 1000 cc fuel matched fuel injectors going in, got fuel rail in. And as with every single part of this build, I go to put something together and there's always some new issue. This is what I was gonna use for my map uh, sensor, my air intake pressure sensor. I was gonna use this one. And <laughs> look at that guy, literally contacts. So I will have to cut that shorter. If I don't flare it somehow, that sucker's gonna pop right loose. So gotta figure that out and we'll get right back to it here. We'll finally get this engine installed. Today is Saturday. I leave, or I leave uh, early on Thursday for Durham Town, and I realized I thought I had everything I needed. Now, the only problem is I'm out of argon, and also because it's a three day weekend, I won't have argon until Tuesday, which means I wouldn't even be able to begin fabricating the exhaust until Tuesday and I have to leave early on Thursday. You can see I've got a pretty strong weld that's going on here and this was done with the flux core. I know I shouldn't do it, but this is all stainless steel exhaust. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this flux core with the stainless steel. The only way to keep this project moving forward. In morning update, today is now Sunday. I was working really late again last night. And as far as I can tell, it's holding pressure. The next day. All right, so if you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably will have seen a post about this already, but let me show you what's going on. The engine just came out for now the third time, and this was after it was completely filled with fluids. So you can see I've got transmission fluid all over my floor. 
The reason why this thing was removed, again, is because I have this spare uh, freeze plug that I found in one of the boxes. So the machine shop that assembled uh, the bottom end put the crank in and did the clearances for me. They are the ones that took three of these plugs out. I located two other locations for them. I put them back together. This third plug was in a very tricky location and it never got reinstalled back into the engine. It was something that the machine shop absolutely should have done because they were the ones that removed all of the freeze plugs and so they knew where these came from. I've never removed them so I wasn't familiar with these plugs whatsoever. This one gets installed inside the bottom end in one of the oil galleys. And the scary thing about this is because it was only the one plug, I was getting enough oil pressure to look like the engine had been assembled properly. I was getting just a couple of PSI, so another two days down the drain, but fortunately we did postpone the Durham Town trip. So I spent the day pulling the engine out, getting the oil pan removed, and I'll show you the problem is that guy right there. No oil plug. Means no oil pressure. Let me get this guy installed. We'll keep moving forward. Because I was rushing so much to try to get to Durham Town, I wasn't able to film like I normally would. So one thing that you guys need to be aware of is there was an issue with my ECU. Now what I did is I added a MapDaddy 4 sensor to my MS3X. And that MapDaddy 4, it's a 4 bar pressure sensor, which allows me to run as much as 60 PSI in boost. But I must have messed something up when I was installing the MapDaddy 4 sensor because my ECU completely failed at this point. So I did the only logical thing and I upgraded to the MS3 Pro Evo from DIY Autotune, which is their flagship product. Now there's a couple of really nice features and benefits with this new ECU, which I'll get into a little bit more at length in another video. But for now, this is me wiring up the new Pro Evo so we can get to a test fire. MS3 Pro Evo installed, wired up. Boost controller's not wired up. There's no reason to have that thing wired just yet because I'm not running any boost. There's no intercooler and uh, there's also no radiator. I'm just plugging everything in, hooking everything up because we're gonna get this baby fired up, get the software installed and hopefully be able to at least check the sensors to make sure that all the sensors are working so I can start getting this thing close to the first start, which I am just itching to do. Eventually. Unfortunately, we are in a no start, no fire position at this point. So I have been trying to diagnose these kind of setups when you're not getting an RPM signal. Typically that's related to a crank sensor. I do hope it is a failed sensor. I've already gone digging through the wiring harness just to verify that it was accurately connected and it is correctly connected to the ECU. Day two. Just like I was testing this one for voltage, I'm gonna test this one for voltage. See that signal drop off? Nine volts. Okay, so it was a faulty sensor, you guys. Got everything loomed back together here. Got that all wrapped back up. That's good. Voltage looks correct. I honestly can't think of a single reason why I shouldn't start this thing right now. We got oil pressure. Make sure there's no leaks. Gotta do it. Gotta do it at some point. This thing 
just got so much louder. There's not much more I can do tonight because it's getting late. Cylinders are all firing. Ignition is fine. Fueling is the main thing that we're going to have to get dialed in. So at this point, I know this system enough to just know it's going to be some tuning issues. I can't do much. Uh, I can't do anything more with it tonight because it's 9 p.m. And it is way louder than it's ever been before. The only issues I know to you guys doesn't seem like it's running, but I can promise you if there was a setting or something that was wrong or a cylinder that wasn't firing or something it wouldn't be sounding this good the reason it starts and it stalls is just because of fueling fuel time trims and ignition acceleration trims with fueling and that sort of thing so it's just a fueling issue that's all it is being a fresh fresh engine it needs a little bit different setup uh, before it starts to break itself in she runs boys durham town here we come Thanks for watching Dirt Gear. I'll see you guys in the next one.